This is lesson 4-3, which is multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And our essential question is, how does understanding operations with fractions help you multiply and divide rational expressions? So our first example is, what is the simplified form of the rational expression? And then what is the domain for which the identity between the two expressions is valid? So what we're going to do with this is we are going to factor everything completely. So if we factor the numerator, it's a difference of squares, we get 2 plus x, 2 minus x. And then the denominator is a trinomial, so we say what multiplies to negative 10 and adds to 3, and we get negative 2 and 5. So now we need to rearrange the numerator just a little bit. So I'm going to write this as x plus 2. And then this right here, if we rearrange it, it's negative x plus 2. So we're gonna, if I factor out a negative from that, it turns into x minus 2. So then we have x minus 2, x plus 5. Okay, we can cancel the x minus 2s. So that means our simplified answer would be negative x plus 2 over x plus 5. Okay, so then it talks about the domain for which the identity between the two expressions is valid. So what we have to keep in mind is we can't have 0 in the denominator. So that means x cannot be negative 5. But what you also have to keep in mind is that even though you've canceled um, something in the numerator and the denominator, it was still there originally. So we can't have, we also can't have 2 as a x value because that would cause us to divide by 0 as well. Okay, our next example is multiplying. So what is the product of 2xy over z times 3x squared over 4yz? So here we can cancel things. So I'm going to use a different color here. So we have a y in the numerator and the denominator. We're allowed to do that across multiplication. Um, I also have a 2 in the numerator, and I can change the 4 into a 2 because we know 2 fourths is equal to 1 half. And then there's nothing else I can cancel there. So if I multiply across the top, I get 3x cubed over z squared. Okay, so there's my multiplication for that one. Okay, and then down here, I'm going to factor everything first. So this x squared plus 2x plus 1 would be x plus 1 times x plus 1. This up here would be x plus 3 and x minus 2. This would be factoring out an x, so x times x plus 1. And this would be factoring out a 5, so 5 times x minus 2. Okay, now I'm going to use a different color. So now anytime, since we're multiplying this, we can cancel anything that we have on the numerator and the denominator. So I have an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. I have an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2. I have a 5 and a 5. So that means that my final answer here would be I have an x left over here and an x left over there. So it would be x squared in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have x plus 1. So then, and if we talk about what x can't be, so x can't be negative 1. It also can't be 2 or negative 3. So all we look at all of the denominators to figure out what x can't be. Okay, the next one is to multiply a rational expression by a polynomial. So here we have x plus 2 over x to the fourth minus 16, and then we're multiplying it by that polynomial. So in my first step, I'm going to factor. So I have x plus 2 over. Now this is a difference of two squares, so it would be x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 4. I can factor that further, so this would be x squared plus 4. I can't factor that because that's a sum of squares, not a difference of squares. 
but x squared minus 4 will turn into x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, the polynomial here, we can factor out an x, so that would be x squared plus 4x minus 12. Then we can say what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 4. So that one would be x minus 2 and x plus 6. Okay, so I'm going to write that down here. x times x minus 2 times x plus 6. And since there's no denominator, we can just put it over 1 if that helps to keep it all straight. And then we can cancel stuff. So we can cancel the x minus 2s, and we can cancel the x plus 2s. So that leaves me with x times x plus 6 in the numerator, and x squared plus 4 in the denominator. Now x cannot be negative 2 or positive 2. Okay, so our last example is dividing rational expressions. So what we need to think about is how do we divide fractions? Well, there's a lot of different ways to remember this. We keep it, change it, flip it. We multiply by the reciprocal. Um, copy dot flip. There's a lot of different things that, um, tricks to remember. Basically, we're going to, so the first step here is I'm going to rewrite this. So we have x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 over 1 minus x squared. Then instead of division, I'm going to change it to multiplication in my first step here. And then I'm going to flip that second fraction. So this would be x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, so this one, let's use a different color. So this one is a difference of squares. So it'd be 1 plus x and 1 minus x. So we're going to have that same issue. I'm going to factor out a negative here and write this as x minus 1 and x plus 1. Okay, this is going to be x plus 4 and x plus 1. Okay, the numerator up here, this is going to be x plus 4 and x minus 1. And then that cubic, the cubic, sometimes we try to group, but I look and I see if I group the first two terms and group the last two terms, I'm not going to be able to get the same number in the parentheses. So my suggestion for factoring the cubic would be think back to our polynomials. So I would P over Q, P over Q would just land me at one or negative one, graph it, and then check for multiplicity. So maybe do multiple. So what you would find is that, um, when you're factoring that, that negative 1 is a 0 three times. So this would be x plus 1, x plus 1, x plus 1. Okay, so now let's use a different color even here. So I'm going to cancel stuff. So I have an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. I have an x minus 1 and an x minus 1. I have an x plus 4, x plus 4, x plus 1, x plus 1. So it's like the only thing left over is that x plus 1 up there, and we have the negative. So it would be negative x plus 1 would be our simplified um, quotient. And here is where, this is where these get a little bit tricky. So when we're saying what the domain is, what x can't be. So what I want you to think of is we need to go back to the original problem. So if we look at this first fraction, we know it can't be 1 or negative 1. And then if we look at this fraction, we can't have a 0 in the denominator, either in the numerator or the denominator, because we know it gets flipped when we multiply by the reciprocal. So that would be negative 4. We already have positive 1, negative 4, and negative 1. We already have all those. So we just make sure we have everything from the numerator and the denominator of the second fraction. Okay, let me know if there's any questions.